Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. Your teaching has revolutionized my life. It set me on course for, for where I'm going for the rest of my life. So thank you, Andrew, for all you've done for me. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Thursday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today is my next to last day to be ministering on financial stewardship. This is an abbreviated teaching on it. This book goes into a lot more detail, but because of my schedule, I'm going to be traveling and gone for about a month. And so anyway, this is an abbreviated teaching. If you would like the whole thing, you need to get this book. And I'm making this book available as a free gift to you. If you want to give, that'd be great. But I'm just wanting to get this teaching out to you. And I know that a lot of people are really skeptical of ministers teaching on finances. They think it's just a ruse for them to uh, fleece you for money. And so I'm giving this away, so you can't say that about me. Tomorrow will be my last day to make this gift available on our television program, so I encourage you to please take advantage of it, to call. We've got a phone center now that's open 24 hours a day, seven days a week and uh, this would be a real blessing to you. I've already covered so much material that it's impossible to go back, but I have really emphasized stewardship. That means that you should not look at your money, at your assets, as being yours. You ought to look at it as everything that you've got, you received it from God. You know, it says over in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 4 and verse 7, it says, "'Who maketh thee to differ from another, and what hast thou that thou didst not receive? Now, if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory as if thou hadst not received it? And of course, you could apply that in many different ways, but you can apply it to your finances. Really, everything you've got, it was a gift from God. It's God that gave you your health. God gave you your talents. God gave you everything. And so why do you act as if it's just yours? We need to recognize that God is the source of everything we've got and that we are stewards of His resources. And when you get this mentality of a steward, a verse that I used in the very beginning of this, it says in uh, Luke chapter 16, I believe it's around verse 12, that if you haven't been faithful in that which is another man's, who's going to give you that which is your own? If you don't become faithful as a steward, if you don't get this steward mentality, and start saying, God, everything I've got is yours. What do you want me to do with it? If you don't get to that place, that is the very thing that is hindering the real supernatural finances of God from flowing to you because God can't trust you with it. You would just use it on yourself. And God wants to bless you to make you a blessing. Genesis chapter 12, verse 2. So when you get this stewardship attitude is what really begins to start releasing the supernatural power of God in your life. I want to turn over to 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and share some verses with you. In uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and in verse 6, it says, But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. You know, I could spend a lot of time, I could spend all of today's program talking about this one thing. I'm, I'm going to try and move on and get to something else. But this is just so simple that you have to have somebody to help you to misunderstand this. There's people that are wanting all of this increase and they're wanting God to give them all of these things, and yet they sow a tiny bit and want a big harvest. That's not how it works. If you sow a little, you get a little. You sow a lot, you get a lot. That is so simple. And yet, it's amazing how many people want a big harvest off of a little sowing. That's not how it works. You want a big harvest, you sow a lot. And then it says in the next verse, "...every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver." I could spend two or three programs talking about this one thing, because so much of giving in the body of Christ is under compulsion. They browbeat you. They force you. They say that it's a debt. And I, actually, if you were to get this book, which again, I'm giving this book away, but if you were to get this book, I teach on here about the tithe. And under the old covenant, if you didn't tithe, you were robbing God and you were cursed with the curse. 
UNDER THE NEW COVENANT, GALATIANS 3.13 SAYS, YOU'VE BEEN REDEEMED FROM THE CURSE OF THE LAW. SO I DON'T BELIEVE THAT WE GIVE UNDER THAT SAME MOTIVATION TODAY, THAT JESUS MADE A DIFFERENCE. HE DIED AND BORE OUR CURSE FOR US. SO EVEN THOUGH YOU AREN'T TITHING, YOU AREN'T UNDER THE CURSE. BUT DOES THAT MEAN THAT YOU ARE OUT FROM UNDER THE TITHE? THE TITHE WAS IN EFFECT BEFORE THE LAW WAS GIVEN. THE FIRST TIME TITHES ARE MENTIONED IN THE BIBLE IS GENESIS CHAPTER 14 WHEN ABRAHAM PAID TITHES TO MELCHIZEDEK, AND THAT WAS 430 YEARS BEFORE THE LAW WAS GIVEN WHERE THE TITHE WAS INSTITUTED. SO I BELIEVE THAT TITHING IS A BIBLE PRINCIPLE, NOT JUST AN OLD TESTAMENT PRINCIPLE. WE DON'T TITHE UNDER THE COMPULSION AND UNDER THE FEAR OF PUNISHMENT THE WAY THAT IT WAS ENFORCED IN THE OLD TESTAMENT, BUT I BELIEVE THAT WE SHOULD STILL BE PAYING A TITHE, BUT NOT DOING IT UNDER COMPULSION. THIS SAYS, AS YOU PURPOSE IN YOUR HEART, SO LET HIM GIVE. AND SO THIS IS JUST PERSONAL PREFERENCE. I THINK THAT IF THE OLD TESTAMENT DEMANDED 10%, WHAT WE HAVE UNDER THE NEW COVENANT IS SO MUCH GREATER. SECOND CORINTHIANS CHAPTER 3 TALKS ABOUT THIS, THAT IT'S LIKE THE DIFFERENCE BETWEEN LIFE AND DEATH. WHAT WE HAVE IS SO MUCH GREATER THAT IF THEY GAVE 10% UNDER THE OLD TESTAMENT, MAN, I THINK THAT'S A MINIMUM THAT WE OUGHT TO BE GIVING TODAY. AND SO MY WIFE AND I GIVE MUCH, MUCH MORE THAN 10%. I'M NOT TELLING YOU THAT YOU HAVE TO DO THAT, BUT YOU NEED TO DO IT AS YOU PURPOSE IN YOUR HEART. BUT IF YOU CAN'T GIVE 10% CHEERFULLY, YOU'D BE BETTER OFF TO GIVE 5% OR 2% OR SOMETHING AND DO IT CHEERFULLY BECAUSE GOD LOVES A CHEERFUL GIVER. AND IF YOU EVER BEGIN TO START GIVING AND IF YOU START SEEING THE SUPERNATURAL SUPPLY OF GOD, AND ONCE YOU UNDERSTAND THAT IT'S MORE BLESSED TO GIVE THAN IT IS TO RECEIVE, AND ONCE YOU BEGIN TO START EXPERIENCING THAT, I GUARANTEE YOU, YOU'LL, you'll START GIVING MORE, I BELIEVE, THAN 10%. But, th- BUT I COULD SPEND A LOT MORE TIME ON THAT. HERE'S A VERSE I WAS WANTING TO GET TO IN VERSE 8. IT SAYS, AND GOD IS ABLE TO MAKE ALL GRACE ABOUND TOWARDS YOU THAT YOU ALWAYS, HAVING ALL SUFFICIENCY IN ALL THINGS, MAY ABOUND UNTO EVERY GOOD WORK. I BELIEVE THAT THIS IS LIKE THE BIBLE'S DEFINITION OF WHAT TRUE PROSPERITY IS. YOU KNOW, THERE'S SOME PEOPLE THAT THEY HAVE BIG HOUSES, THEY HAVE BIG CARS, THEY MAY HAVE MONEY TIED UP IN THE STOCK MARKET OR WHATEVER, BUT THEY CAN'T ABOUND UNTO EVERY GOOD WORK BECAUSE THEY'RE... ALL OF THEIR ASSETS ARE TIED UP IN SOMETHING. THE BIBLE DEFINITION OF PROSPERITY ISN'T HOW MUCH STUFF YOU HAVE, BUT RATHER IT'S WHETHER YOU ARE ABLE TO ABOUND TO EVERY GOOD WORK. AND THERE ARE SOME PEOPLE THAT THEY MAY HAVE A LOT OF ASSETS, BUT THEY AREN'T ABLE TO GIVE BECAUSE IT'S ALL TIED UP. IT'S ALL, YOU KNOW, IT'S NOT LIQUID ASSETS. I BELIEVE THAT TRUE PROSPERITY IS NOT MEASURED BY HOW MUCH YOU KEEP. IT'S MEASURED BY HOW MUCH YOU GIVE. I'VE GOT A FRIEND OF MINE THAT I'VE MENTIONED BEFORE, BUT HE LIVES IN A HOUSE THAT'S ONLY... HE PAID $2,500 FOR THAT HOUSE BACK IN THE 1960s, I THINK IT WAS, AND IT WAS ONLY 700 SQUARE FEET, DIDN'T EVEN HAVE INDOOR PLUMBING. HE SINCE THEN HAS ADDED INDOOR PLUMBING, AND IT'S NICE, AND HE LIKES IT, BUT HE DOESN'T USE HIS MONEY FOR HIMSELF, BUT HE GIVES 90% OF WHAT HE GETS AWAY. THAT IS AMAZING. AND HE HAS RENTAL PROPERTIES. I DON'T EVEN KNOW, 20, 30 RENTAL PROPERTIES. THAT'S WHERE HE GETS HIS MONEY FROM AND STUFF. BUT HE GIVES AWAY A BUNCH. AND I BELIEVE THAT IN GOD'S SIGHT, THAT MAN IS MUCH MORE PROSPEROUS THAN PEOPLE THAT LIVE IN multi-million DOLLAR HOMES. AND SEE, THIS IS NOT THE WAY THAT MOST PEOPLE THINK. THEY LOOK AT HOW MUCH YOU'VE GOT TO JUDGE HOW PROSPEROUS YOU ARE. THIS SCRIPTURE IS SAYING THE REASON GOD MAKES ALL GRACE ABOUND TOWARDS YOU SO THAT YOU ALWAYS, HAVING ALL SUFFICIENCY IN ALL THINGS, MAY ABOUND TO EVERY GOOD WORK. THAT IS THE PURPOSE OF PROSPERITY, IS SO THAT YOU CAN GIVE. AND SOMEBODY'S LISTENING AND SAYS, WELL, IF I DID THAT AND IF I JUST STARTED GIVING, I WOULDN'T HAVE ANYTHING. IF THERE WASN'T A GOD WHO PROMISED THAT WHEN YOU GIVE, IT'LL BE GIVEN BACK UNTO YOU, GOOD MEASURE, PRESSED DOWN, SHAKEN TOGETHER AND RUNNING OVER, LUKE 6, 38. IF THERE WASN'T A GOD WHO PROMISED IN uh, PROVERBS THAT WHEN, YOU KNOW, THAT YOU KEEP MORE THAN YOU MEET AND IT LEADS TO POVERTY, BUT WHEN YOU ARE LIBERAL AND GIVE, THAT IT TENDS TO PROSPERITY AND BLESSING. PROVERBS CHAPTER 3 TALKS ABOUT HONOR THE LORD WITH YOUR SUBSTANCE, SO SHALL YOUR BARNS BE FILLED WITH PLENTY AND YOUR PRESSES BURST OUT WITH NEW WINE. IF THERE WASN'T A GOD WHO MADE ALL OF THESE PROMISES ABOUT HOW HE WOULD BLESS YOU AS YOU GIVE, WELL, THEN IT WOULD BE TRUE THAT FOR YOU TO JUST START GIVING 
WOULD TEND TOWARDS POVERTY. BUT SINCE THERE IS A GOD WHO SET HIS KINGDOM UP THAT HE GIVES SEED TO THE SOWER, HE GIVES MONEY TO PEOPLE WHO ARE GIVERS, BECAUSE THERE IS A GOD WHO HAS MADE THOSE PROMISES, WHEN YOU START GIVING, IT DOESN'T TEND TO POVERTY, IT TENDS TO PROSPERITY. AND VICE VERSA, OR THE OPPOSITE OF IT IS THAT WHEN YOU HOARD AND WHEN YOU TAKE EVERYTHING AND JUST PUT IT INTO WHAT YOU HAVE, THAT TENDS TO POVERTY. NOW, YOU CAN PROSPER OUTSIDE OF GOD. I COULD make, NAME SOME NAMES RIGHT NOW, PEOPLE WHO ARE BILLIONAIRES WHO PROSPERED IN VERY UNGODLY WAYS, GOING INTO FOREIGN COUNTRIES AND MAKING THE STOCK MARKET CRASH AND THEN BUYING EVERYTHING, AND AS IT COME BACK, THEY MADE THEIR MONEY OFF OF THE BACKS OF PEOPLE, AND THERE'S PEOPLE WHO STEAL, AND THERE'S PEOPLE IN THE MAFIA WHO MAKE MONEY. YOU CAN GET MONEY OUTSIDE OF GOD, BUT IF YOU WANT GOD'S PROSPERITY FLOWING THROUGH YOU, THE WAY UP IN GOD'S KINGDOM IS DOWN. THE WAY TO INCREASE IS TO GIVE, NOT TO HOARD. AND UNLESS YOU CHANGE YOUR MINDSET, YOU AREN'T GOING TO SEE THIS ABUNDANCE. GOD MAKES ALL OF THIS ABUNDANCE ABOUND TOWARDS YOU SO THAT YOU CAN ABOUND TO EVERY GOOD WORK. YOU KNOW, JUST THIS WEEK, WE REVEALED OUR PLANS FOR A 10-YEAR PLAN FOR EXPANDING Caris BIBLE COLLEGE SO THAT IT HAS ALL OF THE FACILITIES THAT ANY UNIVERSITY WOULD HAVE. I MEAN, IT'S A, it's a MAJOR DEAL. AND THERE'S PROBABLY PEOPLE WATCHING THIS PROGRAM WHO SAW THAT. IF YOU DIDN'T SEE IT, YOU CAN GO TO OUR WEBSITE AND YOU CAN SEE THAT ARCHIVE THING FROM LAST TUESDAY. BUT THERE'S PEOPLE THAT MIGHT SAY, MAN, I WISHED I COULD BE A PART OF THAT. I'D LIKE TO TRAIN PEOPLE. I'D LIKE TO HELP PEOPLE uh, BE A PART OF THIS LAST, uh, YOU KNOW, THIRD GRADE AWAKENING THAT COULD CHANGE THIS NATION. AND YOU WANT TO DO IT, BUT YOU DON'T HAVE MONEY TO DO IT. WELL, THEN, ACCORDING TO THIS SCRIPTURE, I DON'T BELIEVE YOU'RE PROSPEROUS. PROSPERITY, IT DOESN'T MATTER ABOUT WHAT YOUR HOUSE IS LIKE. IT DOESN'T MATTER HOW BIG YOUR CAR IS, WHAT YOUR JEWELRY IS LIKE. IF YOU CAN'T GIVE AND IF YOU CAN'T ABOUND TO EVERY GOOD WORK, THEN YOU AREN'T PROSPEROUS. AND I DON'T CARE WHAT YOUR BOTTOM LINE IS. I DON'T CARE WHAT ON PAPER IT LOOKS LIKE. PROSPERITY IN GOD'S KINGDOM IS MEASURED BY HOW MUCH YOU GIVE, NOT BY HOW MUCH YOU KEEP. BOY, THOSE ARE SOME STRONG STATEMENTS. LOOK AT THIS IN VERSE 10. IT SAYS, NOW HE THAT MINISTERETH SEED TO THE SOWER, BOTH MINISTER BREAD FOR YOUR FOOD AND MULTIPLY YOUR SEED SOWN AND INCREASE THE FRUITS OF YOUR RIGHTEOUSNESS. MAN, THAT IS AWESOME. SOMEBODY SAYS, WHAT'S SO AWESOME ABOUT THAT? IT SAYS THAT GOD GIVES SEED TO THE SOWER. HE'S JUST USING SEED AS AN EXAMPLE OF GIVING. AND IT'S REALLY A GREAT COMPARISON BECAUSE WHEN YOU PLANT A SEED IN THE GROUND, IT NEVER STAYS JUST THAT ONE SEED. IT GROWS AND MULTIPLIES. ACCORDING TO MARK CHAPTER 4, YOU GET 30, 60, AND 100 FOLD RETURN OFF OF IT. SO THE WAY THAT A SEED MULTIPLIES WHEN YOU PLANT IT, WHEN YOU GIVE IT, IT'S A SIMILAR THING WHEN YOU GIVE MONEY. WHEN YOU GIVE, THAT MONEY DOESN'T LEAVE YOUR LIFE. IT JUST ENTERS INTO YOUR FUTURE WHERE IT GROWS AND IT MULTIPLIES AND IT COMES BACK TO YOU ON EVERY WAVE. SO THIS IS A GREAT COMPARISON. BUT WHEN HE SAYS HERE, HE THAT GIVES uh, MINISTERS SEED TO THE SOWER, YOU COULD SAY IT THIS WAY, THAT GOD WHO GIVES MONEY TO GIVERS, BOTH MULTIPLY YOUR SEED SOWN OR YOUR MONEY GIVEN AND INCREASE THE FRUITS OF YOUR RIGHTEOUSNESS. GOD GIVES MONEY TO PEOPLE WHO ARE GIVERS. It, LET ME SAY IT THIS WAY. IF YOU'RE SHORT OF MONEY, GOD DOESN'T SEE YOU AS A GIVER. NOW, GOD LOVES YOU, AND GOD WANTS TO TAKE CARE OF YOU, AND HE MAKES HIS SUN TO RISE ON THE JUST AND THE UNJUST. HE SENDS RAIN ON THE JUST AND THE UNJUST. AND SO GOD LOVES YOU, AND GOD WILL, YOU KNOW, HELP YOU TO SURVIVE. BUT IF YOU WANT TO THRIVE, IF YOU REALLY WANT TO PROSPER, IF YOU WANT TO SEE THE SUPERNATURAL BLESSING AND SUPPLY OF GOD FLOW THROUGH YOU, YOU GOT TO START BEING A SOWER. AND THERE'S A LOT OF PEOPLE THAT THEY WANT MONEY, BUT THEY WANT IT SO THAT THEY CAN JUST CONSUME IT UPON THEMSELVES. AND THAT ACTUALLY HINDERS THE FLOW OF GOD. GOD GIVES SEED TO SOWERS. IF YOU'RE SHORT OF SEED, GOD DOESN'T SEE YOU AS A SOWER. HE SEES YOU AS A TAKER. HE SEES YOU AS AN EATER. DID YOU KNOW PEOPLE WHO ARE SOWERS, THEY ALSO NEED TO EAT. AND SO WHEN GOD BLESSES YOU, HE'LL NEVER JUST GIVE YOU ENOUGH JUST SO THAT YOU CAN GIVE AND THEN YOU STRUGGLE. NO, HE WILL ALSO TAKE CARE OF YOU. IT SAYS HE GIVES SEED TO THE sower. HE WILL BOTH uh, MULTIPLY, uh, HE WILL GIVE YOU BREAD FOR YOUR FOOD AND MULTIPLY YOUR SEED SOME. 
SO GOD WILL NEVER JUST GIVE YOU ENOUGH FOR YOURSELF AND THEN, I MEAN, ENOUGH FOR YOU TO GIVE AND THEN YOU STRUGGLE YOURSELF. NO, HE WILL ALWAYS TAKE CARE OF YOU. ONE HAND TO RECEIVE AND ONE HAND TO GIVE AND AS THE MONEY FLOWS THROUGH, THERE'S JUST PLENTY FOR YOU. YOU'LL WIND UP HAVING MORE ACCIDENTALLY THAN YOU EVER HAD ON PURPOSE BEFORE. YOU KNOW, I'VE USED THIS EXAMPLE A LOT, BUT THERE'S A FRIEND OF MINE, DAN Stahlbaum, WHO PASTORS IN MERRITT ISLAND, FLORIDA, AND I WENT TO HIS CHURCH FOR MANY YEARS IN A ROW. AND BACK WHEN THEY ONLY HAD THREE OR FOUR HUNDRED PEOPLE IN THE CHURCH, I WENT TO HIS CHURCH, AND THIS IS BACK DURING A TIME THAT WE WERE BUILDING A... Uh, uh, WE WERE REMODELING A BUILDING IN COLORADO SPRINGS, AND IT WAS GOING TO COST ME $3.2 MILLION TO REMODEL IT, AND THE LORD TOLD ME TO DO IT DEBT-FREE. AND SO I HAD ADVERTISED IT TO MY PARTNERS. Uh, PASTOR DAN Stahlbaum KNEW ABOUT IT. AND WHEN I CAME TO HIS CHURCH ON SUNDAY MORNING, HE GOT UP AND HE SAID HE HAD PRAYED ABOUT IT, AND GOD TOLD HIM THAT HIS CHURCH, THIS GROUP OF THREE OR FOUR HUNDRED PEOPLE MAXIMUM, WAS SUPPOSED TO GIVE $50,000 TO ME FOR A MEETING FROM SUNDAY THROUGH WEDNESDAY. NOW THAT'S A BIG OFFERING, ESPECIALLY BACK, I DON'T KNOW, 20 YEARS AGO OR WHENEVER THAT WAS. AND THAT WAS A LARGE AMOUNT OF MONEY, AND I KNOW THAT A LOT OF PEOPLE THOUGHT, HOW ARE WE GOING TO DO THAT? AND SO uh, DAN PRAYED ABOUT IT, AND HE SAID THAT THE LORD TOLD HIM THAT THERE WERE 50 PEOPLE THAT WERE SUPPOSED TO GIVE $1,000. BUT HE USED THIS VERSE THAT I'M USING RIGHT HERE, AND IT SAYS, GOD WILL GIVE SEED TO THE SOWER. SO HE SAYS, YOU MAY NOT HAVE $1,000 RIGHT NOW, BUT GOD SAID HE WOULD GIVE SEED TO PEOPLE WHO WOULD SOW IT. SO HE GOT UP ON SUNDAY MORNING, AND HE SAYS, HOW MANY OF YOU, IF GOD GIVES YOU $1,000 DURING THIS WEEK, WOULD SOW IT INTO ANDREW'S BUILDING PROGRAM? AND I FORGET HOW MANY PEOPLE, BUT THERE WAS A FEW. THERE WASN'T 50 PEOPLE, BUT THERE WAS A FEW PEOPLE WHO RAISED THEIR HAND AND SAID THAT THEY WOULD DO THAT. AND SO HE PRAYED WITH THEM AND BELIEVED THAT GOD WAS GOING TO GIVE THEM SEED TO SOW, JUST LIKE THIS VERSE SAYS. ON SUNDAY NIGHT, WE ALREADY HAD TWO OR THREE PEOPLE THAT IN JUST THAT AFTERNOON, SINCE THE SUNDAY MORNING SERVICE, THEY HAD A SUPERNATURAL SUPPLY OF MONEY COME TO THEM, AND THERE WASN'T ONE OF THEM THAT ONLY GOT $1,000. THEY WOULD GET $1,500 OR $2,000. JUST LIKE THIS SAID, GOD NOT ONLY GIVES YOU SEED TO SOW, BUT HE'LL ALSO GIVE YOU BREAD FOR YOUR FOOD. AND SO THOSE PEOPLE GOT UP ON SUNDAY NIGHT AND BEGAN TO TESTIFY ABOUT HOW GOD HAD GIVEN THEM SEED TO SOW. AND SO, BOY, WHEN PEOPLE SAW THAT, THEY THOUGHT, WELL, I'LL GET IN ON THAT. WE HAD MORE PEOPLE THAT VOLUNTEERED TO DO IT. AND ON MONDAY NIGHT, THERE WAS A COUPLE WHO CAME, AND THEY HAD MONEY IN THE BANK ACCOUNT. THEY WERE BELIEVING THAT GOD WAS GOING TO GIVE THEM EXTRA MONEY TO SOW, BUT RATHER THAN WAITING ON IT, THEY JUST DECIDED THAT THEY WERE GOING TO WRITE A $1,000 CHECK OUT OF THEIR SAVINGS ACCOUNT, AND THEY WROTE IT BEFORE HE WENT TO WORK, AND PRAYED OVER IT, AND THEN WHEN THEY CAME TO CHURCH ON MONDAY NIGHT, THEY WERE GOING TO PUT THAT IN THE OFFERING. AND SO WHEN HE WENT TO WORK ON THAT MONDAY, HIS BOSS CALLED HIM IN AND SAID, WE'RE DOWNSIZING, AND WE HAVE ELIMINATED YOUR ENTIRE DEPARTMENT. AND SO THEREFORE, YOU'RE LAID OFF, AND ALL OF THAT DEPARTMENT IS LAID OFF. BUT HE SAID, BECAUSE WE LIKE YOU SO MUCH AND YOUR WORK, worth et, work ETHIC, WE WANTED TO KEEP YOU ON, AND SO WHAT WE'VE DONE IS PROMOTE YOU AND MADE YOU THE MANAGER OVER ANOTHER DEPARTMENT, AND THIS GUY GOT A $4,000 PER MONTH RAISE. <laughs> AND WHEN HE CAME TO CHURCH THAT NIGHT, HE TOLD WHAT HAD HAPPENED TO HIM, HOW GOD GAVE HIM SEED TO SOW, AND ALL OF A SUDDEN, EVERYBODY'S HAND WENT UP. MAN, I WANT TO GET IN ON THIS. AND DID YOU KNOW THAT THEY WOUND UP GIVING ME, I FORGET THE EXACT NUMBER, BUT IT WAS OVER $50,000. I THINK IT WAS $54,000. AND EVERY SINGLE PERSON WHO GAVE $1,000 AND SAID, I'LL GIVE IF GOD WILL GIVE SEED TO THE SOW, EVERY SINGLE ONE OF THEM HAD A SUPERNATURAL SUPPLY OF MONEY COME IN. BECAUSE GOD WILL GIVE SEED TO PEOPLE WHO WILL SOW IT. AND THERE ARE SOME OF YOU LISTENING TO THAT AND THINK, OH, MAN, I WANT THAT, BECAUSE ALL YOU'RE THINKING ABOUT IS, I WANT TO SOW SO THAT I CAN GET ALL THIS MONEY AND I CAN DO MORE. THAT'S STILL THE ATTITUDE OF A TAKER. AGAIN, I DON'T KNOW HOW TO GET THIS ACROSS TO YOU WITHOUT FEELING LIKE I'M CONDEMNING YOU, BUT THERE ARE SO MANY PEOPLE THAT THE ONLY REASON YOU GIVE IS BECAUSE YOU BELIEVE IT'S GOING TO give and BE GIVEN BACK TO YOU. AND SO WHEN YOU HEAR ME GIVE A TESTIMONY LIKE THIS, YOU SAY, BOY, I WANT TO GET IN ON THAT BECAUSE I REALLY WANT A $4,000 PER MONTH RAISE. THAT'S STILL THE ATTITUDE OF A TAKER, NOT A SOWER. 
WHEN YOU GET THIS ATTITUDE THAT, GOD, I WANT TO PROSPER SO I CAN GIVE. NOW, YOU KNOW THAT WHEN YOU GIVE, IT'S GOING TO BE GIVEN BACK TO YOU. SO I'M NOT SAYING YOU TURN DOWN THE, the RETURN ON YOUR GIVING. I'M NOT SAYING THAT YOU DON'T BELIEVE FOR IT. BUT THE ONLY REASON YOU'RE BELIEVING FOR THE RETURN ON YOUR GIVING IS BECAUSE GOD PROMISED THAT THAT'S THE WAY IT WOULD BE. AND YOU'RE DOING IT SO THAT IT'LL JUST PROSPER YOU MORE AND ALLOW YOU TO BE AN EVEN BIGGER GIVER. THE FOCUS IS REALLY ON THE GIVING, NOT THE RECEIVING. YOU RECEIVE BECAUSE YOU KNOW THAT'S NECESSARY IN ORDER FOR YOU TO BE A GIVER. BUT THE FOCUS IS ON GIVING. WHEN YOU GET YOUR HEART RIGHT AND YOU SAY, GOD, I WANT TO PROSPER, AND I KNOW THAT AS I PROSPER, THAT YES, YOU'LL TAKE CARE OF ME. YES, I'LL HAVE THINGS. BUT THE REAL REASON I WANT TO PROSPER IS BECAUSE I WANT TO BE A BLESSING TO PEOPLE. I WANT TO TOUCH OTHER PEOPLE'S LIVES. AND IF YOUR HEART IS SINCERE, AND GOD KNOWS YOUR HEART, 1 SAMUEL 16, 7 SAYS, MAN LOOKS ON THE OUTWARD APPEARANCE, BUT GOD LOOKS ON THE HEART. YOU MAY BE SAYING THE RIGHT THINGS. YOU MAY BE GIVING, BUT IF YOUR HEART ISN'T RIGHT IN THIS THING, GOD KNOWS IT, AND IT WILL HINDER THE FLOW OF GOD. GOD'S NOT GOING TO GIVE YOU MONEY IF THAT MONEY IS GOING TO DESTROY YOU. IT SAYS OVER IN 1 TIMOTHY CHAPTER 6 THAT THOSE WHO WILL BE RICH FALL INTO MANY TEMPTATIONS AND LUST THAT DROWN MEN IN PERDITION. SO MONEY CAN DESTROY YOU IF YOUR HEART'S NOT RIGHT, AND GOD KNOWS YOUR HEART, AND IF YOUR HEART'S NOT RIGHT, GOD'S NOT GOING TO FLOW THIS MONEY TO YOU BECAUSE IT WOULD JUST AMPLIFY THAT WRONG HEART, AND IT WOULD JUST CAUSE PROBLEMS. BUT GOD KNOWS YOUR HEART, AND IF YOUR HEART IS RIGHT, IF YOU BECOME A SOWER INSTEAD OF JUST A TAKER, INSTEAD OF JUST AN EATER, GOD WILL GET MONEY TO YOU. GOD GIVES SEED TO SOWERS. YOU KNOW, IF YOU'RE HEARING THIS AND IF THE HOLY SPIRIT IS GIVING YOU UNDERSTANDING AND YOU'RE RECEIVING IT, YOUR ATTITUDE OUGHT TO BE, GOD, DON'T LOOK ANY FURTHER. I WANT TO BE A GIVER. I WANT TO BE A SOWER. I WANT TO LIVE TO GIVE, NOT GIVE TO LIVE. BUT I WANT TO LIVE TO GIVE. I WANT TO BE A BLESSING TO OTHER PEOPLE. I WANT TO HAVE AN ABUNDANCE SO I CAN ABOUND UNTO EVERY GOOD WORK SO THAT I CAN HELP GET THE GOSPEL OUT, SO THAT I CAN HELP PEOPLE THAT ARE IN NEED. YOU KNOW, I TELL OUR STUDENTS ALL OF THE TIME THAT, MAN, IF YOU'RE BLESSED AND IF GOD'S TAKING CARE OF YOU, WHY DON'T YOU PAY SOMEBODY ELSE'S TUITION? THAT'S JUST A FOREIGN THOUGHT TO MOST. WELL, WHY WOULD I DO SOMETHING FOR SOMEBODY ELSE? IF YOU NEED A CAR, WHY DON'T YOU GO HELP SOMEBODY ELSE GET A CAR? SEE, MOST PEOPLE they THINK, WELL, WHAT ABOUT ME? I GOT TO TAKE CARE OF ME FIRST. THAT'S NOT SEEKING FIRST THE KINGDOM OF GOD. YOU OUGHT TO SEEK FIRST THE KINGDOM OF GOD. GO HELP SOMEBODY ELSE GET A CAR. GO HELP SOMEBODY ELSE PAY THEIR TUITION. IF WHAT YOU HAVE ISN'T ENOUGH FOR YOUR NEED, TURN IT INTO A SEED AND SOW IT WHERE IT'LL GROW AND IT'LL MULTIPLY AND GOD WILL START THIS SUPERNATURAL FLOW OF FINANCES TOWARDS YOU. TOMORROW'S GOING TO BE MY LAST DAY TO OFFER YOU THIS BOOK ON FINANCIAL STEWARDSHIP FREE OF CHARGE. IT'S A 170-PAGE BOOK AND WE'RE JUST OFFERING THIS TO YOU AS A GIFT. AND I ENCOURAGE YOU TO PLEASE GET IT. WE'VE GOT IT NOT ONLY IN ENGLISH, BUT IN SPANISH. AND THEN WE HAVE TWO DVDs THAT HAVE TESTIMONIES OF PEOPLE ON HERE. SO PLEASE LISTEN TO OUR ANNOUNCER AS HE GIVES YOU THIS INFORMATION. AND PLEASE CALL AND RECEIVE THESE MATERIALS TODAY. IN THE BEAUTIFUL TOWN OF WOODLAND PARK, Karis BIBLE COLLEGE HAS BEEN CHANGING PEOPLE'S LIVES FOR OVER 25 YEARS. THE PEOPLE HERE ARE SO LIKE-MINDED. THEY WANT TO HELP YOU GROW. THESE ARE PEOPLE WHO GENUINELY CARE ABOUT YOU. THEY WANT THE BEST FOR YOU. BE PREPARED TO BE BLOWN AWAY WITH THE TEACHINGS. IT'S NOT JUST A SEASON IN YOUR LIFE. THERE'S NO WAY YOU CAN'T CHANGE. YOU CAN'T REALLY GO WRONG GOING TO A PLACE THAT YOU GET TO SIT AND LISTEN TO THE WORD FOR FOUR HOURS A DAY. BEING UNDER THE WORD THAT MUCH JUST ALLOWED GOD TO POUR SO MUCH INTO ME. IF YOU FEEL SUPERNATURAL PEACE ABOUT COMING TO KARIS, THAT'S GOD. I KNOW YOU'RE LIKE, HOW, WHEN, WHERE, ALL THESE QUESTIONS, JUST DO IT. THE LORD WILL PROVIDE. I WAS DOUBTING AND SECOND GUESSING IT, BUT WHEN I TOOK THAT STEP OF FAITH, IMMEDIATELY, LIKE, THINGS WERE PROVIDED. JUST BEING AROUND LIKE-MINDED BELIEVERS, TEACHERS WHO ARE THERE FOR YOU AND READY TO TALK TO YOU AT ANY MOMENT AND ANSWER YOUR QUESTIONS, THERE'S JUST NOTHING LIKE IT. JUST FOLLOW THE LEADING OF THE ONE THAT YOU SERVE, AND THAT'S ALWAYS GOING TO BE THE RIGHT DIRECTION TO GO. GO TO KARISBIBLECOLLEGE.ORG TO REGISTER TODAY. HAVE YOU CHECKED OUT THE INSIDE STORY YET? It's a great way for you to get an inside look of what is happening at Andrew Womack Ministries. With over six years of interviews, there's a lot to get excited about. Check out this month's featured story today, only at awmi.net. 
I just want to thank those of you who have helped us so much financially this year. So as we approach the end of the year, many people give extra gifts for the tax benefits. And I just encourage you to consider Caris Bible College, Andrew Womack Ministries to share with us and help us to reach out and touch more lives. So check it out. Caris Bible College, Andrew Womack Ministry in your year in giving. I want to let you know that we had a groundbreaking for our student housing in Karis Bible College on May the 11th. You can go to our website and find video of that. But we are now beginning to build student housing and we have a partnership entitled Foundation Builders that is just specifically dedicated towards building out our facilities here at Karis Bible College. I would appreciate it if you would pray about it and join with me in helping train people to be soldiers in this fight, to go out and help take our nation back and bring people into the kingdom of God. I guarantee you, it'll be money well invested. So you can check it out, our foundation builders for student housing here at Karis Bible College. Actually, I've been a partner going on a year. And uh, because of all the, the, the feeding, the spiritual food that I've gotten from him, I felt like it would only be natural to contribute to the ministry. It's almost like being in awe of I'm um, part of this great ministry that's doing all these great things all over the world. It just blesses me to know that the seeds that I'm planting are spreading through his huge ministry. Andrew is offering his book, Financial Stewardship, as his free gift to you today. This offer is limited to one free book per household and is available in the US, UK, Canada, and Australia. Contact us today to receive your free book. Andrew's complete teaching, Financial Stewardship, is available in a study guide and as a six-part CD or DVD album made from our daily television broadcast. Each of these valuable resources is available for a gift of any amount when you contact us. This entire series is also available for audio download, absolutely free from our website. Andrew is also offering the Financial Breakthroughs Volume 1 and Volume 2 DVDs. Each DVD includes six testimonies of people that experience the freedom of turning their finances over to God. Or you can get these valuable resources in the Financial Stewardship Package. This package includes the Financial Stewardship Book, study guide, and your choice of either the CD or DVD album, as well as the Financial Breakthroughs DVDs. This package has a catalog value of $120, but you can get it today for only $85. Go to awmi.net to see all the ways you can get these products. You can also order resources or receive prayer by calling our helpline at 719-635-1111. Our helpline is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. To write us, use the address on your screen. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today.